Okay, so we continue with chapter three of The Great Gatsby. Um, so, so, so now it's like the part of the evening where the party's kind of starting to fall apart. People are drunk, people are angry, and, uh, and the narrator's waiting, uh, sees Jordan and Gatsby coming out together. Um, and uh, he was, um, and, and now he, he becomes much more formal. He's obviously had some kind of an intimate conversation with her. And Jordan says, uh, I've heard the most, I've just heard the most amazing thing. Um, how long were we in there? But he doesn't know. He, and they'd been about an hour together. Um, and she says, it was simply amazing, but I swore I wouldn't tell it. And I'm here tantalizing you. And she's really playing with, with Nick and his curiosity. And she tells Nick to come see her. Um, and that's it. That's the end of the party. Um, and he says, thank you very much to, to Gatsby. Um, and they had planned to go uh, on the, and he reminds them that we're gonna, they're gonna go on the plane tomorrow. And now Philadelphia wants Gatsby on the phone. This is two in the morning, okay? So um, which makes us curious, what, what, what is it that he's, what is it that Gatsby's doing? Uh, what's his business? Um, and, uh, and then he sees something uh, which is a kind of hint of what's gonna happen. In the rest of the story, um, we, there's, there's been a car accident. Person has um, has he, he, he's, he see a wreck of a car that's blocking all the other cars. So there's a huge amount of noise because they're all trying to get out. And the man has, takes no response. He's very drunk. He's obviously just driven the car into a ditch. He says, "See, explained it went in the ditch," um, and uh, um, and this who is this person? He's the one who was in Gatsby's library earlier. And he says, I know nothing whatever about m mechanics. And says, how, does it ha how did it happen? The man takes no responsibility whatsoever. He is completely drunk. He drove an expensive car. He destroyed it. And um, um, and he, he's just not, not even, not even interested in any kind of, any kind of uh, criticism on his, uh, um, uh, uh, criticism on his behaviour. It turns out that actually it's not the fat guy who's been driving the car, it's another guy and he comes out of the car and he doesn't even realise that the wheel has become detached from the car. The car is completely undrivable and he is so drunk he has no clue of what's going on. It's a very absurd scene um, but it just goes to show that there's like another side to all this carefree, careless behaviour that people behave in a way which is which is completely irresponsible, okay? And they're not interested in in taking any any responsibility whatsoever for what they do. Um, okay, so now um, now Nick spends uh, a lot of time kind of justifying himself as a serious young man who is spending his summers carefully he's not just partying all the time um and also that he's even uh, he's he's seeing other women um and uh, and and even he stops a relationship because his brother disapproves um so he he's like it's interesting that we go to this uh this other this description of his life in the city um as if he's trying to kind of detach himself from the whole business with uh, Gatsby and everything else. Um, and he talks about how he likes Fifth Avenue and he likes the, the feel of New York. Um, but there's a hint that even though New York is a place of incredible promise and excitement, everyone's making money. There are so many possibilities going on. Um, he says, I felt a haunting loneliness sometimes and felt it in others. Okay, it says it here. Um, that there were people, poor young clerks loitered in front of windows waiting until it was time for a solitary restaurant dinner. So again, the city is a place of incredible promise, but it's also a place where people can get quite lost. For a while, he's like busy with his own stuff. He lost sight of uh, Jordan Baker, but, but he's decided that he actually quite likes her. Um, I wasn't actually in love, but I felt a sort of tender curiosity. Um, and uh, he says the bored, haughty face that she turned to the world concealed something. So he's looking for something more in her. He, he's kind of fascinated by her. Um, but for us as the readers, um, we're not particularly impressed with Jordan Baker. I don't know if she's got anything in her that we like. She, 
it says she was incurably dishonest. I mean, meaning she was so dishonest that nothing would ever stop her from being dishonest. Um, uh, and uh, it says, I suppose she had begun dealing in subterfuges when she was very young. A subterfuge is a story to cover um, the real truth, okay? Uh, when she was young, very young, in order to keep that cool, insolent smile turned to the world and yet satisfy the demands of her hard, jaunty body. So uh, it could be that she, she uh, you know, wants to attract men. And that's why she does all these things and she wants to keep, keep herself apart from everyone and aloof. Um, so she, again, we have appearance versus reality how what is going on in jordan's heart very hard to tell um uh, and he says it made no difference to me dishonesty in a woman is a thing you never blame deeply oh my gosh what a sexist remark wow very hard for us to read this in 2020 um but in those days women did have to put on a show and they had to act a certain way because they had less power and less um agency than they do now um i was casually sorry and then i forgot so he doesn't really care that she's not honest it doesn't bother him um and i wonder i do wonder if he sees he's kind of fascinated with um with gatsby and maybe he he's using jordan to get close to gatsby um and then there's a, this th another thing about driving she drives one time very close to workmen she almost you know, she almost hits them. Our fender flicked, uh, uh, flicked a button on a man's coat. And he says to her, you're a rotten driver. You should be careful. You shouldn't drive at all. And then uh, and then she says something which is so arrogant and so, ooh, you know, she's, she, 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 um, he, she says, I am careful. And he says, no, you're not. He says, well, other people are. Like, what, everyone else has to watch out for you? Is that, that is, that is what we call arrogant. Um, and she, she just says, they They'll keep out of my way. It takes two to make an accident. By the way, there are a lot of jokes about women drivers. Have you ever heard jokes about women drivers? I think we're we're holding on to a few stereotypes here, but never mind. Um, and he's saying, suppose you met someone as, as careless as yourself. And she says, I hope I never will. I hate careless people. Okay, so... <laughs> like, and that's why I like you. Okay, so... Um, at that point, he feels some kind of a strong pull towards her. He thinks he loves her. But I think that we've got the, the Nick at the end of the story who realises it wasn't love. He would be writing letters to her and he'd say, love Nick. But he's not sure whether he he, he loved her or not. Um, uh, he says, nevertheless, there was a vague understanding that had to be tactfully broken off before I was free. Um, so uh, it says, everyone suspects himself of at least one of the cardinal virtues. Cardinal virtues is the most important qualities that a person should have. And this is mine, okay? I am one of the few honest people that I have ever known. Very, very deep remark. We have somebody who is actually honest in the story, even though he's got his faults. And what does that say about everybody else around him?